Hey everybody, good morning. How you doing? Lee Shranahan. Oops, hang on. I just got the, uh... there we go, that's better. It's a little harsh if I have that white light. Hey everybody, good morning. Oh, I know what's going on, hang on. This happened before and I couldn't figure out what was happening. Let me explain, let me explain. See this here? Ah, where is it? There we go. See the microphone there? This is how I narrate the, uh, I dictate the, the Stranahan report. That's how I do it. I listen on headphones and then I dictate. And so what happened was it was still listening to me dictate. Anyway, I'm just back home, got back from Washington, D.C. Uh, uh, I'm tired. <laughs> um, it's, it's weird to be back in the groove. Uh, uh, back at home, but I got to get back in the groove of my diet. I got to get back in the groove of, of just my morning routine. You know, when I travel, um, it's every day is a little bit different, particularly covering the protests and stuff like that. So let's talk about stuff. This morning, Stranham report just went out. We're, the thing I'm really gratified about is we're getting more subscribers each and every single day. Um, uh, uh, the, the big stories this morning, obviously, are the wall and the refugee uh, issues from Trump. As I just tweeted out, has anyone made a list of all the losers that were saying that Trump would never do this? This is the thing. It's always, but someone's got to hold people accountable for that. If you, if, you, you, if you were saying, not you, you're smarter than that, but if you were saying that Trump would never build the wall and his voters are suckers and he's never going to do it and he's never going to do it and he's never going to do it, you should apologize. You should apologize at this point. And a lot of the Never Trump people were saying that. They also were saying he wasn't going to take actions on refugees. Now, the wall is going to be very interesting because uh, I don't, what's the downside to that? I just don't, like, what's the downside to that? I don't even see how they're going to make hay out of it. Uh, the the political upside is going to be huge. And any concerns people had, I think, uh, over the weekend about... The, look, look, Trump made trouble for himself uh, by bringing up the inauguration numbers and getting into it. I don't think it was a good move. I said so at the time. But now, that, now he's back on track doing the things that won him the election, which is making good on promises about jobs about the economy that was day one and now making good on the promises about the wall let me talk about this the 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 thing real briefly about daca because i mentioned that the other day i'm glad he didn't do daca first that a pol uh in other words there's an executive order on the on the uh kids of illegal immigrants who were brought here and now are sort of in a a legal no-zone status, right? They're called the dreamers, but I don't call them the dreamers. That's politically charged something. They're the children of illegal immigrants who were brought here illegally, right? That is, when you look at immigration issues, that may be the most complex one because if you came here illegally, even if you came here for great motivations, whatever you want to protect your family, you still came here illegally, so that's pretty straightforward. You broke the law. If you steal to feed your family, you're still stealing. Does that make sense? But if you, but punishing the kids of people who did that, that's another issue. And I'm not saying, I can see both sides of this issue, by the way, if you want to be rational about it. If you want to be crazy about it, then I don't see both sides. The rational argument is you don't punish the kids, They especially if they've been here for a while and they're solid citizens who came here and grew up here. The other one is, hey, it's not your fault, but your parents broke the law, and particularly if their young kids go back. But either way, it is when you're dealing with immigration issues about illegal immigration, it is the most complex one. Let's just say that flat out, okay? It's the most complex one. Don't do that first day. That's stupid. That would have been stupid to do that first day. It sends the wrong message. The first illegal immigrants you have to go after, in my opinion, clearly, are the criminals. Those are the first ones to go after, period. And by the way, the pro-illegal immigration forces 
want to protect the criminals, and they're very explicit about this. The people on the left want to protect the criminals too. They say this over and over and over. That's the point of sanctuary city laws being expanded in San Francisco. Make them defend that. You see what I'm saying? You know, they're like I, you know, I say nice stuff about Steve Bannon all the time, but the dude's smart, and uh, Ryan's Priebus is smart too. And the, the the people in the administration, you know, a lot of animosity against Trump is kind of personal. I don't, I don't, whatever. Uh, but the administration, there's lots of really smart people, and I think they made good moves there. So anyway, this stuff, uh, what's happening is, there's a, there's a, there's a good line from the Elvis Costello song. Welcome to the Working Week, where he says, I feel like a juggler running out of hands. But he sings it really fast, so you can't, I feel like a juggler running out of hands, right? So uh, that's what Trump is doing to the left right now. The left, who are so happy protesting in their pussy hats and everything over the weekend. <laughs> policy, policy, policy. The wall, refugees, EPA, if you read the Stranahan report this morning, they are not going to know what to protest. The pipeline, right? It's just after them and after them and after them. I have more coming, by the way, talking about that pipeline. Uh, one of the interesting things that's happening up in the upper Midwest and the, the Plain states, Dakota and stuff like that, is the protest uh, that are supposedly for the Native Americans, right, have really hurt the Native Americans because they're not really for the Native Americans, they're for the left. And they've really hurt their casino businesses. And so there's there's lots of inter-tribal uh, leadership, activist anger there. And by the way, it's a losing issue now. You lost, right? I mean, here's the thing, if you were protesting, if you were a protester on that issue, you lost the issue. You lost. I see the Strandham report just showed up in my mailbox, so that means it should be showing up in your mailbox. Uh, what else is going on? I said Citizen Journalism School will be coming out last night, and we ran into this new technical snafu. It's almost up. I have to let, it's early. What time is it? It's 721 here, so I've been up for a couple hours, but I try to let my son sleep in a little bit more. I got one technical issue now, then we're going to open up the doors for early enrollment. We'll do a new mailer about that. That should happen the next hour or two. He was up working. We had a weird problem with the video. I made a video for you talking about the deal on Citizen Journalism School. It's like a 10-minute video. It looks nice. And uh, there's a weird technical problem with the audio syncing. We never quite solved it. So the audio mostly syncs, but at some points, if it seems like a, a dubbed kung fu movie, where I'm talking to you about Citizen Journalism School, but the voice doesn't quite match. That was me doing that on purpose, by the way. That wasn't that wasn't an audio sync problem. I just learned to do that when I did improv. Um, anyway, so we had a minor audio sync problem, uh, and we and never fixed it. But the but the content's good, and 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 uh, I think you'll be really excited about it. Look, I'm more committed to citizen journalism than ever. Uh, and that's all I'm going to say about it. I could say more, but I don't want to right now. I'll, I'll eventually say something about it. But I, what I can tell you, I can tell you that Andrew Breitbart's vision was citizen journalism. That's what was his vision. That's what I can tell you. And that's what I'm working on with Citizen Journalism School. And I'll leave it at that. Let me let me leave it there. I have other stuff coming this week. I have a couple of other announcements. I was exchanging email with a friend of mine who will show you a nameless this morning. And I gave him the heads up. Uh, uh, but I'll tell you one thing. I'll give you a hint about one thing. I'll give you a hint about one thing that's coming. Uh, I have my Making the News podcast. I also... Uh, uh, and I was doing Radio Stranahan for a little while, and I may go back to that, but I have other radio announcements possibly coming up. But here's the announcement. Uh, I'll just do it right now, because why not? It's not that formal, and there's not that many people up, because it's early, but let me tell you the announcement. So I'm going to be doing a new podcast called The Populist. 
The Populist is going to be a podcast about the political philosophy of modern populism in America. And Donald Trump is the messenger on that, and his administration is the delivery mechanism at a federal level. But as I've talked about before and have been talking about for months, there's a philosophy behind this of anti-elitism that I think really crosses the left-right split. And that's my goal. Uh, it's easy to goof on the people who are protesting, and I do somewhat, but I want you to... Uh, let me give you a slightly different perspective on the protesters. Okay, let me give you a slightly different perspective on liberals. Because we're all Americans, so let's start there. And the people who hate America, they're still Americans, and I'm not a fan of theirs, but let's let's start here. But there are different cultures, there's different political cultures in this country. If you grew up in Southern California, Los Angeles, or you grew up in New York, you're probably liberal because everyone around you is. If you grew up in parts of Texas or the Midwest, you're probably uh, conservative or Republican because everyone around you is, right? If you grew up in rural America, you probably are. That doesn't make you right or wrong per se. It just means you grew up in that part of the country. Does that make sense? So, people around the country have been seeing the same problem. They see that big government and big business are in cahoots and that there's this elitism in the media and there's this elitism in the way government, in the way we're governed and in, in the way decisions are made and, and, and it comes from the both the government and the corporations, right? Now, you probably agree on that point, but what I want you to see is that if you're a conservative, you see that, uh, and, and like I say, likely if you were brought up conservative, you see that through the prism of conservatism. But that same problem can be seen through the prism of liberalism, and that's where the Bernie Sanders supporters come from, right? A lot of the Bernie Sam Sanders supporters are people who see the same problem that you as a conservative might see, but they they see the connection between big government and big business. The liberal perspective is they they want to penalize big business. I don't think that's the right solution, right? I feel very strongly, I could argue very strongly that's not the right solution. The solution is smaller government. But I want to point out that we as Americans broadly have seen the same problems, right? This is what I want to point out, and it's, it's very, um, look, we, we have, everybody knows things have gotten crazy in this country with the way uh, we, we've become factionalized. We talk about the divisions in this country. By the way, the people talking to you about the divisions in this country and the people sowing the divisions in this country are the elitist. See, because they want to keep people divided. I'm going to say that again. This is really important for you to understand before you, I mean, it's easy for me as, a, like I say, a conservative, right, right, rider to hate on people with pussy hats or whatever, right? But I will tell you from being in Washington, first off, the conversations I had with people in pussy hats, by and large, were perfectly pleasant. They're nice people. A couple of them called me a Nazi. And I, and I you know, I don't, I don't, I don't play around with that. So if someone calls me a Nazi, I'm, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to punch back verbally, of course. I didn't actually punch anyone because that's what anarchists do, like when they punch Richard Spencer, which a lot of people on the left are defending. I wouldn't defend if a commie was punched, right? I would be like, no, you don't do that. Civilization. I'm team civilization, right? I'm team civilization. But, uh, they want to keep people divided. 